Hey everybody, what's going on? It's uh, BFR Tuesday, the week of Thanksgiving 2020. I don't know if you're like me, but I'm ready for 2020 to Dunzo. Six more weeks. Let's let's get out of this thing. All right. So um, hope everybody is well. Uh, my name is Ed Lacara. I do a BFR Tuesday to answer questions regarding integration of BFR with yourself. If you're a self user, or if you're a provider like I am, um, using BFR for rehabilitation or strength and conditioning. So. I like to start these off with answering any specific questions that people have on utilizing uh, BFR. And so I'll just kind of open it up to the floor um, and say hello. You can go to the chat section in the upper right corner of your screen and you can um, type in your questions for me. I'm happy to answer them. Oh, good, Manette. You got the new cuffs. Excellent. That's good to hear. Glad to hear it. There, we're slowly getting them out. Um, uh, man, it's been a battle with uh, COVID, trying to get these things uh, done in a timely manner. But most people have been very, very kind and patient while they're waiting. So we appreciate that for sure. Honestly, just trying to get it right because um, Murphy's Law is just in effect. It's crazy. Um, Minette, did you get the pro version or did you get the uh, consumer version for yourself? Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be good. You like it it's so much easier than inflating and finding uh, pressures. It's really, it's really, 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 really good. Um, I, yeah, I got to get some video out too for, um, about going through the whole process. I haven't been able to do that yet because mine, mine were early, early, early set and they're not quite right <clears throat> with the pumps. And we've been updating the, um, the firmware almost on a daily basis with the engineers. So we're trying to like get it narrowed and perfect for everyone. What did you think of the, um, I love these new cuffs. I think, um, you know, they're much smaller than the other cuffs. They're lighter. People like them. And um, they're just more comfortable. And I think the upper extremity, you know, we reduced the, the width on it a bit, still considered wide, but less wide than our previous ones and um, much more comfortable. It kind of hits you above the belly of the bicep better. We're trying to listen to people and when they don't have as long of a, uh, a limb, it was it was the, the muscle, the middle of the muscle was getting caught up underneath it because we were too wide on it. So we narrowed it. And I think it's much, much more comfortable. Um, yeah, and then only having three is, is yeah, it's helpful. It saves space and time and um, it's easier. Level two courses, uh, yes, we're hoping for a January live is how I'll launch it. Um, what I'm waiting for, Nick wanted me to wait for um, enough cuffs to be available for people to be able to utilize it during the sessions. And so we're not doing any live, um, live but online obviously COVID has shut us down if it wasn't for COVID, we would have done it months and months and months ago the content's ready um but he wanted me to wait so that any of these live uh sessions that we're doing online are um we're using the new cuffs and we don't have enough new cuffs yet to uh where i think we're still 700 behind on um pre-orders we got to get all caught up with that get our ducks in a row. And then from there, then we'll be able to do these live courses so that um, people have the cuffs when we're doing it live, I keep saying live, but live online. And um, it'll be a, just a better experience versus the just theoretically going through pressures and things. Um, 
yeah, we're still, we're way behind and taking orders every day. And um, so it's, we're trying to get caught up. <clears throat> Jody keeps asking me about the level two. I know, I know. We'll get it out. I promise uh, early, early 2021, like January, 2021. We just got to get caught up with these cops. Um, all right. Should be enough time for people to be on. Any questions from anybody with uh, with their cuffs, with BFR programming, anything that you like, happy to answer. All right, if no questions, I'm gonna go into a study that I, um, will be including into uh, into the level two oh, question. What is the difference between these and the Delphi cuffs? So uh, the Delphi cuff has, um, it has an external pump and dobbler, which has to stay connected to the cuffs at the whole time. So what you'll see on um, social media is that they'll be um, they'll be connected to those pumps. Now ours does the same thing. It um, it will inflate. It will find LOP limb occlusion pressure. It will auto regulate on the pro version only. Um, if you're doing auto regulation, you keep the pumps plugged in. If you don't need it to auto regulate, then you can detach the pumps and it frees up your arms from having the uh, pumps attached. Um, from a practical standpoint, there really is no difference between the Delphi cuff and our Gen 3 cuff, um, except for cost. I mean, your Delphi cuffs are, um, I believe, over $6,000 for a single cuff, and ours are um, right around $1,500 for. Uh, two pumps, the clinical version, two pumps, and uh, three different size cuffs. So practically, they're essentially the same. Cost difference is um, pretty large. We also will sell to uh, strength and conditioning specialists, which Delphi will not. Um, we will um, sell directly to the consumer. We prefer that they get the, um, the consumer cuff. Um, it's just a little bit simpler. It doesn't have as many bells and whistles. Um, and you can't go to 100% occlusion with the consumer cuff for safety measures. You can do ischemic preconditioning with uh, our pro version, but you cannot do it with the consumer version. Really, most consumers don't need the ischemic preconditioning setting. Um, that's a big difference. I mean, they're essentially the same now with this new generation and um, just cost-wise. We wanted to do what we did with instrument-assisted soft tissue, which was take a very high quality product, but make it affordable. So it was affordable to the masses, not just the elite um, pro level, high university level. Um, and, you know, we have therapy clinics with hundreds of clinics and they'll use our cuffs uh, because they're doing essentially the same thing, but with uh, much more affordable. You can get your ROI very, very quick with these, probably one day compared to um, investing so much into a, a bilateral cuff system. You're welcome. Any other questions before I get into aerobic, this aerobic capacity study? So I'm gonna throw this, I gotta find it. I, um, I definitely, Hmm. <laughs> All right, I'm going to drag this in here. Okay. 
I'm sharing a systematic review. So that's now in the handout section. So you can go to the upper right corner, look at handouts. And um, this is a 2020 study. Um, and I'll be using this quite a bit with uh, the level two training. Because in level one, we introduce aerobic capacity training um, but primarily as, um, as a transition. So trying to transition from non-weight bearing or semi-weight bearing into full weight bearing for people that uh, can only do really light intensity aerobic capacity training. And so what we've known from a lot of the different studies is that if I combine low intensity training with uh, walking, cycling, um, swimming, um, other rowing, um, elliptical, I can use a very low heart rate as a guide into what the intensity is needed in order to get an um, a adaptation effect. The biggest benefit I think from using BFR, BFR with walking, BFR with walking on the treadmill, BFR with cycling is you don't need as much time in order to get change in aerobic capacity. So. You know, typically in order to improve aerobic capacity, you're looking at 40 to 45 minutes, pretty high intensity. Um, you've got to do that four or five times a week. Um, you can do simple walk training 15, 20 minutes a day, uh, preferably twice a day if you really want to, you know, accelerate your aerobic capacity. Um, but you can do this uh, aerobic capacity training and increase VO2, increase strength of the lower limb, decrease or increase torque at the knee, and so essentially strength of the extensor groups, which in my mind um, means that if I'm stronger in the lower extremity, I am then gonna be more um, adaptable, durable, and less likely for fall. So I love using BFR walking protocols in order to increase the strength of the lower extremity. I can get that done in 15 or 20 minutes in the clinic, and then I can do two or three exercises in the upper extremity. And now somebody's got a full body workout um, using light loads. I'm not gonna cause any more da damage to the tissue. I'm not gonna cause uh, a lot of irritation to the joints, but they're getting a physiological response. Now this study goes into um, high intensity, low intensity, um, and you can read through it. I'm not gonna just go through it, but um, it's a good share. Number one, because it's a 2020 systematic review. So it's looking if I look at a systematic review, what I'm looking at is, okay, what articles are out there? So every article up to the point where this is published or pretty close should be included in here. So you can get a good idea of what's out there in the literature and then you can do a kind of a deeper dive into any of these um, studies. So um, the bottom line really is, is if you're not using it for aerobic capacity and you want your clients or yourself to do some quick training, like let's say, um, you know, a quick walk or a quick cycle, um, use the cuffs in conjunction with, um, with those protocols and you can get, make something that's non-physiologic, um, physiologic and your body will adapt to it. Okay, so I just wanted to share that article with you. Um, I had just kind of stumbled across it. It didn't, I don't know why it didn't come across my, because it was published in April, but um, it didn't come across my RSS feeds and all the other things that I have in place in order to see what other, what new studies come out. Um, I was just doing some research for my book and I, uh, I kind of came across it. So we'll be including that in level two to decipher these protocols and uh, make things easy for you. So all you need to do is like look and say, okay, here's, here's the protocol. Here's the research that based it. If I do want to check it out, great. Um, but it's all based on the literature. There was a study that I came across in the last three months about CrossFit having similar effects as BFR. Have you seen that one? I'm trying to find it to share. Uh, yeah, share it with me, that'd be great. I mean, I would expect BFR and high intensity to be similar. Uh, it depends on what they're measuring. The only thing I wouldn't expect um, with high intensity exercise and BFR is BFR should trump for hypertrophy. The isolated exercise with BFR, I don't think there's a better way to get hypertrophy.
Um, but if you're looking at aerobic capacity adaptations, if you're looking at um, if you're looking at strength, I would think that high intensity training with CrossFit or any type of high intensity training sessions um, would be very comparable to BFR. I would expect high intensity to be slightly better, not necessarily um, over the top better, but but better with a lower risk of injury with the BFR because you're not having to take your body to close to uh, failure. So yeah, Minette, if you find that, send that over. I would love to see it. And then uh, maybe I'll talk about it next week. Minute saying yes, agreed on hypertrophy. What am I? Yeah, yeah, it's, um, yeah, when you want hypertrophy, I, I mean, I would say do isolated exercise as close to failure as you can go without going to failure and do that three to four times a week. And you're going to definitely grow mass, especially in areas that are difficult to grow. Like some, like I have a tough time with my biceps and I have, but I have my calves are ridiculous. And there's some people that have difficult time with their calves, but their biceps and chest will go crazy. Um, so you can do some of these isolated exercises. I call it as an adjunct to whatever your normal workouts are. And you can really get, um, some good hypertrophy effects. All right, y'all. Well, I'm going to take my lunch before my next patient. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me know what you think about um, these handouts. If there's a better way for me to go through this research, I don't want to just go through and read it. Um, you can look at the abstract if it's of interest. Please go through. I'll dissect it. Uh, further and include this in my level one and level two courses. Um, and uh, that's it. If you do want to expand your knowledge base on BFR, we do have uh, our online course available at smarttoolsplus.com. And there's an on-demand course. There's also a free course in there where I, where I go through um, kind of a, it's about a two-hour webinar, I believe, on um, what you need to think about when you're doing, um, starting the BFR process. All right. I appreciate you following me and, um, I will see you next week. Have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, be safe.